good evening. Welcome back to Worship on Wednesday. As we begin tonight with the thought of, from John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Let's stand as we sing. I have seen the light shining in the darkness, bursting through the shadows, delivering the dawn. I have seen the light whose holy name is Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful again to be able to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ to worship you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And Lord, we're mindful of the gift that was given on our behalf, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. So as we come together here tonight to worship, Lord, help us put everything of the world out of our mind so we may focus on you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Infant holy, infant lowly. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle stall, oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the baby is Lord of all, Christ the baby is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning news, saw the glory. Story tidings of our gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praise his voice. Greet the morrow. Christ the babe was born for you. Christ the babe was born for you. of peace, Son of God, isn't he? Bearing gifts, we travel 
worship for field and mountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Lord's house. Good to see you here this evening and hope you've had a good day. How many would testify to that? Had a good day? Okay, just about everybody's had a good day. We praise the Lord and uh, some folks here tell me every day is good. Is that right, Brother Jay? That they're all good? And we are thankful to the Lord for this particular day that he has given us. The health to come out to his house, the desire of our heart to come out here and worship him in the middle of the week. Thank you so much for being here and thank you God for saving us. And if you're joining us by way of the broadcast, welcome to our midweek service, our worship on Wednesday. We invite you to come join us every time you can by way of the broadcast or we would prefer you come and worship with us if you're physically able so that we can get to know you as well uh, but thank you so much for tuning us in tonight and tonight we want to uh, uh, think about some folks who are are hurting we've got a big weekend planned again Sunday was almost full wasn't it just didn't like much being full and what a blessing it was and some new families introduced to First Baptist Church Sunday through ministries and we appreciate all those who were involved in the happy birthday Jesus party and uh, what a blessing that was to our community and the children of our church as well from kindergarten through uh, fifth grade thankful for all of the volunteers who worked so hard and diligently uh, to present the gospel and help those kids have a lot of fun and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And we also uh, had a wonderful night Sunday night, didn't we? Sunday morning we started out with joyful noises and we just kept going from there, didn't we? What a blessing it was Sunday morning to, to see those little ones, some of my favorites. And then uh, Golden Chords, you had your hands full trying to keep up with the Junior Children's Choir. I tell you, they just opened their mouth and their heart and sung and, 
and uh, smiled, and man, they had a had soloists galore in there. They were just wonderful, and so we appreciated the whole day Sunday. What a beautiful day! And this coming Sunday, uh, we're going to be looking forward to the uh, sanctuary choir, and they're going to be singing about peace Sunday night in their uh, Easter Easter Christmas musical. And I hope that you'll plan to be here at 6 o'clock for that. What a beautiful service I'm sure that that's going to be. So don't forget about Bible study at, at 945 and then morning worship. And what a beautiful day. Next Wednesday night we've got, a, got our fellowship supper, our Christmas fellowship supper at 530 over in the new fellowship building. So I hope you're looking ahead and planning for that. and and inviting folks to come and share with you there. And so look forward to all of these events of the holidays because soon they will be over. And uh, we'll have nothing to look forward to then except cold weather. And so enjoy these days. Amen? And that's our human nature talking. We've got something to look forward to every day. And God is so good. I wonder how many folks would just have something on your heart you have a special prayer need yourself or someone that you know and love or acquainted with there's a special need in their life and and you just raise your hand with me and say I, I just got a burden tonight for somebody and lift them up in prayer thank you so much thank you uh, we want to remember all of those folks in our prayers tonight and and remember our nation and Remember our churches, our sister churches and pastors and, and the churches of our local Baptist Association and, and uh, many of you are involved uh, with that as I am. And let's just ask God to help us to become partners together on the same team, working to win our neighborhood and the nations to faith in Jesus Christ. Remember the Lottie Moon Christmas offering in your prayers and how God would have you and me to participate in helping to publish the gospel through our international mission board missionaries uh, around the globe and many in some unreached people groups. And so let's pray for them and pray about our participation in the offering or maybe even a short-term mission trip that God might be calling you to participate in to help literally and physically publish the good news in those nations. So a uh, lot to pray for as we think about our missionaries and this time of year when God gave everything uh, that he had planned from the foundation of the world to give his darling son, Jesus Christ. He was very God. And he laid down his life on a cross of Calvary, connecting Christmas and Easter. And he laid down his life so that we might live. And so that death would have no uh, hold or power over us. Christmas, that's what it's all about. And we thank the Lord for his gift to us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you this evening. Uh, Lord, just to give you glory, praise, and honor. Lord, we just want to tell you that we love you. Especially this time of year, we're so much tuned in to the fact that, Lord, you gave us your Son, that you so loved the world that you gave us your Son, that whosoever among us would believe on him and call upon his name in faith, turning from their sins, would be saved and father we know that there's nothing we could do to be saved except respond to your gracious free gift and receive it into our heart and now lord we thank you for the salvation we have in christ and pray that we would be all about sharing that gift with everyone else in our neighborhood and in the nations and that, God, we could just find ways, Lord, to give more, to pray more, to go more, and to share Jesus wherever that we have the opportunity. Bless our international missionaries wherever they're serving around the globe. 
We pray you'd bless those missionaries and their children. Keep them safe. And Lord, help them to worship you during this Advent season and to celebrate the joy of Christmas and the peace of Christmas. Many of them a long, long way from the rest of their natural family. God, just be there with them and be there with their where their Christian family that gathers around them. And Father, may it just be a time of celebration, a time of worship, a time of all of us uh, counting what this is all about. So Father, we thank you for the blessings of this past Lord's Day, for the blessings of this evening and the services and the meetings that are going on with different age levels. We thank you for our time of prayer together here in the worship center as the church to pray together. Lord, just about every one of us has raised our hands. We're carrying a burden, a load. We're anxious about something going on in our own life or somebody that we know and love. And God, we just bring these burdens to the foot of the cross tonight. And we cry out, Jesus, and we pray, Jesus, that you would break the bonds, the chains of darkness in people's lives, that you would break the chains of illness and disease in people's lives, that, God, you would break the chains of addiction in people's lives, and that, God, you would help folks to turn to you or to return to you, and that we could love them just as they are, and express to them, uh, Lord, your unspeakable glory, but your inexhaustible love and acceptance of them as well, that they could see that in our life. Bring them to the cross. Bring them to Jesus. Bring healing to them, we pray, and God will give you the glory for it all. Lord, bless our nation. May we return to you. And may we, through the judgment that has fallen upon our people and our nation, may we keep our faith in you and proclaim the good news that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight we're finishing up a study. I hope you've got a, a study guide. But we're finishing up week 21 which is actually the fourth section of what we have been looking at for some time now. Uh, we, we talked about how that the early church, the people of faith, God followers, uh, the priority and purpose of prayer is God taught them the, the reason for praying and, and uh, they focused on God we talked about for a couple of weeks and they responded to him from the heart. And then uh, they sought first his kingdom. You remember, it sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? The promise of Jesus as we pray his promises in the word of God. They sought first the kingdom of God. And for the last three weeks and then tonight, we conclude this part about recognizing God at work in his world and the activity of God in this world and responding in faith to his activity in this world. And, and I'm convinced that we see his activity every day. We see him at work every day. We run into people every day. Uh, a pastor I know, uh, Don Pearson, uh, was talking about that him and his wife had a little project that they were going to do uh, in a Bible study room at their church, and they had set aside some time uh, to do that one day this week and they got a call on the way and it was a, and a person that wanted to, to talk to him and he said I'm on the way to the church just meet me there and that person began asking questions about things he wasn't sure about in his relationship with Jesus Christ and long story short that person was saved there in that little area that they were going to paint and Don said that he found out once again, afresh and new, that God sometimes has a different schedule than we do, 
and he rejoiced that somebody got saved instead of that little area getting painted. Amen? And so God's at work. We just have to be aware of where God's at work. And we're going to talk about that tonight in this final segment on that particular uh, subject. We want to remember, of course, before I run out of time at the end, the Chambers family, Greg Chambers and Sue and Jimmy Delk, and uh, they will be receiving friends tomorrow night, 6 to 8, up at Four Oaks here on Main Street, and the funeral service will be, I think, at 8. And also, Jeff Foster asked that we remember his mother, who's in the hospital, and Manford Payne, uh, sending this out to him, who's back here in Oneida at the nursing home, and sent, sends word to his pastor and church that he's back in town. And so, keep praying for Brother Manford, and and go see him if you get the opportunity, and he appreciates your prayer so, so very much. Tonight, um, looking at your study sheet, we, we review, first of all, that all the spiritual giants of the Bible could do what? If they got giant status, if, if they were faithful, what could they see? They could do what with God in the world? See God at work, okay. Okay. And so that's one way that we get to be spiritual giants. How many of you see yourself as a spiritual giant? I don't. I don't see any hands raised. But sometimes we're more of a giant in God's eyes than we think. But one way we do that, and God uses ordinary people, and that's what the uh, message is going to be about Sunday morning, by the way, is how God uses ordinary people in ordinary times in our lives so I hope you'll be here for that but God uses folks like us whenever we recognize him at work and one of the keys to recognizing God using scripture is whether or not your blank is being impacted whether your life is being impacted by God and so if his word is speaking to you if you're speaking to him through prayer and you're recognizing him at work it's impacting your life and then number three Three there on your study sheet. One of the keys to recognizing God at work in his people is whether or not they have a blank for spiritual things. A hunger for spiritual things. Uh, most of us don't have a problem having a hunger uh, at least three times a day, do we? And sometimes we're more like cattle. Uh, Brother John Watson, what do cattle do? Do they eat three times a day? What do they do? They just sort of eat all the time. They just graze. Wherever there's some, something to eat, they, they just graze. And uh, sometimes, especially this time of year, if, if you're not careful, we'll just graze. Uh, a, a blessed, blessed woman in this church brought some Christmas goodies, and man, they're good. Uh, Lacey, could I get an amen? Paul? Amen. All right. And... Instead of three meals a day, if I'm not careful, I, I turn uh, every trip to the front of the office and back into a grazing time. I have to discipline myself not to do that because it is so good. And so uh, don't always win that battle, but I'm having to work on that one. Uh, man, what a blessing that is. But let's talk about ways that God works in the world. And, and uh, John Franklin says that the most uh, usual place that we see God at work in the world is through individuals and families and nations. And so you can think about some, some examples in your own life how you see that God works in the life of an individual that you n may know. You may know somebody that God's working in their life right now. And kind of it may be in the form of upheaval or uh, illness or they're asking a lot of questions a curiosity a spiritual curiosity going on in their life and uh, he says it's in th those arenas that we most often see him at work and he, he lists three ways that we can see him at work first of all as God seeks us as God is seeking us the only religion in the world where God seeks the individual is Christianity the only one. The rest of them, it's, it's legalism. How do we seek God? How do we find God? But in Christianity, God is seeking us. Ever since the Garden of Eden, 
with Adam and Eve when God sought them in the cool of the evening. God has always been seeking us. That's who he is. That, that's what he does. John 6, 44, uh, in the King James Version of the Bible, says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And so God seeks us for salvation. He calls us or elects us to salvation. So he seeks us. 2 Corinthians 2.12 Paul writes, furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. And so God seeks us, and also sometimes he just lays before us an open door, doesn't he? That we can serve him. He, he's at work, and he just opens the door, just like Don Pearson and his wife this week was on the way to church to do a little painting on a little project that was special to them and you know what God just opened a door an opportunity for him to share Christ and that person got the greatest Christmas gift they could ever receive and so God just opens up those doors of opportunity for us we just have to be sensitive to them it may happen at your workplace it may happen uh, at, when you're picking your kids up from school or you're running into McDonald's or Hardee's or Lee's or somewhere uh, to get them a bite of food. Maybe you're going to the, to the big box store. Or maybe you're going uh, to the discount store, the dollar store, or maybe one of other small businesses, and all of a sudden there's an opportunity that God opens right in front of you. Paul said he went to Troas to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened to him by the Lord to do that. And so we see him at work as he work seeks us. The second thing, we see him at work as he brings judgment. This is a little more negative. It's a little darker. We don't want to think about that. But God is at work in our world with his judgment, isn't he? Uh, there's judgment going on all around us. Judgment in my life, probably, in your life, probably, uh, in our communities, our nation, uh, our world. God's judgment is around. And so we see him at work as he seeks us. We see him as he brings judgment. Job said in the 12th chapter, verse 17, uh, one way that he does that is he takes away uh, people's wisdom and their, their ability. He, look, he says, He leadeth counselors away spoiled and maketh the judges fools. So uh, you had to be wise to be a judge, to sit on the seat of judgment. You had to have wisdom. Well, you know, the story I remember from being a boy and raised in Sunday school, I remember uh, the story about uh, the two women who claimed that one child was theirs. And Solomon, in all of his wisdom that God gave him, uh, it was very simple. Just bring me a sword. We'll just cut the baby in half, and I'll give you half and you half. I don't know who it belongs to. I'll just give one, each half. And one of the women started screaming and pitching a fit, and no, no, don't do that. Uh, you know what? It was very easy to discern who the real mother was. And so he's saying here that the wisdom that he has given to men, even the judges, that they become fools. So he withdraws his wisdom as a way of judgment. And uh, sometimes we may witness that in our nation and in our world as those who are to be leaders, uh, have wisdom and judgment uh, revoked. And there is no moral compass there. And so judgment is, is going on. Look at Job 12 verses 20 and 24 it says he removeth away the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the age he taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way I hear more and more people say all the time I just don't know which way to go I, I just don't know the way out of this situation I don't know what I can do I don't know whether to turn to the right or the left, to go forward or backward. I just don't know. There's no way that it appears evident to, to get out of the situation that I'm in, people say. 
And so uh, Job is saying judgment uh, is falling upon people, the leadership, the wisdom, the direction. And then uh, somebody said a long time ago, and I'll not take credit for this because it wasn't me, but somebody said a long time ago, all that God has to do to bring judgment upon the United States of America is just take his hand off of her. And judgment is already there. And so Isaiah 3, verses 1 through 3, For behold, the Lord and the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. So you got your food and your water. The mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the prudent and the ancient, the captain of 50, the honorable man, the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. So from top to bottom, God withdrawing his hand from Jerusalem and Judah. And then Romans 1.18, one that a lot of times uh, evangelical Christians like to spout around with this one today, and it's so very true, but uh, there's a lot more sin in the world at play than just one or two sins, amen? And a lot of times all you hear from the pulpits thundering in America today or the radio broadcast or television programs is, is either about homosexual sexual sin or abortion and everything else is is okay uh, evidently because we never hear anything about them but look what it, Romans 1 18 and, and then verse 28 dropping down there the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and the wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness and furthermore since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. And so I don't know about you, but I can read that verse all over the evening news. If you sit down and watch the evening news, or if you're one of those junkies that likes cable news 24 hours a day, I can't stand it. I'd be so depressed. I'd have to have some happy pills. And there's nothing wrong with happy pills if you need them, by the way. Don't take that the wrong way. But uh, some days I think I could use some of them. And some of you probably think I could use some of them. But uh, I just can't listen to that much news. It's too depressing. But if you listen to the news at all, you see the judgment of God upon this world. Isaiah 29, 6, the Lord Almighty will come with thunder. Now this one, I, I picked this one out of his list of verses because at about 4.13 this morning there was a 4.4 on the Richter scale earthquake down in Decatur, Tennessee, down in Meigs County, Tennessee, if you know where that's at, going down I-75 toward Chattanooga, uh, not too far from us. And how many, did anybody feel that this morning? Anybody feel it? Okay. Uh, Miss Hula felt it, and I'm not sure. Something woke me up. And when I turned over in bed, everything was just kind of going crazy in my, but I just thought I had. Uh, what Debbie's great grandmother called old crazy head. So I don't know. That's probably it, but uh, uh, sometimes there's nothing on the Richter scale, and I feel the same way. So I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you, you, it don't matter to me. I'm not claiming to have felt it because I was asleep before I got that lost in my head feeling. All right. So here we go. But look, listen what he says. The Lord Almighty will come with thunder and earthquake and great noise with windstorm and tempest and flames of a devouring fire. Have you ever seen the headlines in, a, in one verse? Uh, for the last year, think about it. That one verse, uh, the judgment of God, no doubt, is all around us. But I want you to hear this. Here's what you need to hear before you run out of here before you get on social media and tell everybody what a uh, narrow-minded minister you have uh, that when we think about it look look what franklin says removal of wisdom and the breakdown of of relationships in our society he said they're always the judgment of god when all this happens god is judging us however look what he says not every natural disaster or war is the judgment of god 
And then he says, one way we can tell is a nation moving toward God or is a nation moving away from God. Now, if we were to vote on that tonight, how many of you think America is moving closer to God tonight? I don't see a taker on that. And how many of you feel like America is moving farther away from God all the time? Well, then, I think we can say that a lot of the things that are going on in this world are the judgment of God. Didn't you say that? I think we can say it with surety. Jeremiah 18, 7, 8, 9, and 10. If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. So God is very much at work in this world. We need to be sensitive to it. And we see him whenever uh, he seeks us, and we see it as he brings judgment around us and and either one of those can be opportunities for us to share christ and hope and victory with people who are hurting then he says finally we see god at work in his world uh, through his unending mercy when he shows us mercy you know there's one thing about god he never brings judgment unless he provides with that an opportunity for mercy an opportunity for repentance. Judgment has a purpose. And he gives us an opportunity to repent. Uh, he gives us an opportunity for faith. He gives us an opportunity for repentance. And he extends his mercy to those who will believe him enough to turn from their sin. He extends his mercy to us when he brings judgment. So, what are some examples from the Bible? Can you think about some of those examples from the Bible where uh, God was bringing judgment, but he gave an opportunity for mercy? Okay, when they were leaving Egypt, uh, that was almost a continuous cycle, wasn't it? Uh, with them and if you want to read about yourself and us just read about the Israelites in the wilderness because God would bring judgment upon them and and they would follow him a little while faithfully and then they would be tempted give in to temptation he'd bring judgment on them and they would repent again he would extend mercy and it's that's why they wandered around 40 years in the wilderness so if you ever wonder why you or your family or your church or our nation, why we're going around in circles and not making any progress, it's because that we're sinning, judgment falls, mercy's extended, we accept God's mercy through repentance and faith, and then when things get going good, our prayer life lets up, our Bible reading lets up, and before long the tempter comes, bam. We give in to it a lot of times. We sin. We're broken inside because we know we've broken God's heart and we know judgment's coming. There remaineth therefore no more sacrifice for sin other than Jesus dying on the cross. When he comes back a second time, it's not to go to the cross for our sin. He comes back as judge and deliverer. But the Hebrew writer says that there's only this fearful looking for this anticipation of judgment when the redeemed of the Lord sin. When we know that we are saved and we are tempted and give in to the tempter and sin, uh, our heart should be broken. Because judgment's coming. We're going to pay. Jesus has already paid for our initial sin. We're going to pay for our sin somewhere. I've experienced that. Have you all experienced that? 
If you've never experienced any kind of judgment from God, uh, he talks about children, the chastisement of children. Uh, did any of you ever have a child that didn't need to be chastened or know of one? If we've never experienced the chastisement of God, the Word of God says, not your pastor, but the Word of God says, then we are not children of God. Are you with me? That's what it says. So if you have never known the judgment of God in your life, then I would suggest to you, and I plead with you even, to please trace the line back and make your peace, calling, and election sure with God because he chastens those that he loves and those who are his children. So he shows mercy, loves to show mercy. The, the, the example, of course, he, he talked about uh, incorrectly I've caught John Franklin in, in a, doing something incorrectly if he was here as you're probably aware I was in a doctoral program with him as a matter of fact I graduated before he did and he stayed behind and learned a lot more than I did but uh, he put something in there that's not true on your study sheet from Lifeway did you catch it? He said, that, he said that God prepared the, a whale. I don't believe it was a whale, was it? Does the Bible say it was a whale? Huh? A great fish. So I'm being just technical because a, a whale is a big fish. But I would enjoy aggravating John about that anyway. Uh, but he prepared a great fish. I, that's one story. John the Baptist, Malachi chapter 4, and then... Uh, we read in the Gospels about John Baptist preparing the way for the Lord and warning people to flee the wrath of God that was to come. And, but my, my favorite is that story about Micaiah ben Imlah, or ben just simply means son of in Hebrew, but Micaiah ben Imlah. Uh, and it comes out of, out of 1 Kings 22, two verses, but Jehoshaphat, you remember... When, when all the kings were uh, going against them and, and they tried to put this uh, battle alliance together and Jehoshaphat says, there, is there anybody we can ask? So they brought all the prophets in, over 400 prophets all told the king what he wanted to hear. Go to battle. Go to battle. Yeah, go to battle. And you know what the king said, what Jeho Jehoshaphat Ask, is there not a prophet of the Lord? Your Bible should have all capitals, L-O-R-D. Is there not a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? And the king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat. There is still one man through whom we can inquire of the L-O-R-D, all caps. But I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me but always bad. A lot of people feel that way about their pastor. I hate him. Because he never prophesies anything good about me. He's always bad. He is Micaiah, son of Imlah, or Micaiah ben Imlah. And the king should not say that, Jehoshaphat replied. So God's mercy is extended. And we find out that even Jesus... Luke 4, 18 and 19 said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so that brings us down to the end of our study. Thinking about God. Thinking about God working in this world. And as you think about all the people in your life, Think about people in your family. Think about people in your workplace. Think about people in the uh, retail establishments that you frequent. Is God working on anybody around you? Or is God working on you? Is God working on anybody around you? Is there an opportunity for you to respond to God through what he is attempting to do in your life? 
Is his mercy been extended to you as judgment comes and as conviction comes and, and a lack of rest and peace in your heart comes? Is God working on you and is he calling you to draw closer to him? Is he trying to do something in you to prepare you for something that lies ahead? I, I just Can I be honest and transparent with you? I don't like the way God does that sometimes. I just don't like it. I like to say to him, Jay, I like to say, God, is there not an easier way that you can prepare me for something you're wanting me to do than to cause me all this hurt and pain? This anxiety, this worry, fretting, whatever word you like to use, sleepless nights, burdened heart. Is there not some easier way that you could just do that? But God is God, and God knows best, and God is sovereign. And sometimes God works on me that way. Does he ever work on you that way? Is he working on you right now? Could he be calling you to himself so that you can draw nearer to him and he can speak to you from his word in ways that you've not been open to him speaking in a long, long time. And when we get past the me and you, is he working on anybody around you that maybe God is calling you to minister to them and to express God's mercy, love, and forgiveness to them? And that his love is without end. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. And there's just a lot of people in today's world that need to hear that God loves them in the middle of the mess they've made of their lives. God still loves them. And I hope and pray that you and I are not part of the ones documenting and keeping score of all the mistakes that they've made. As it were that we were drawing out, I usually leave this in, but I needed to, getting out our cell phone, videoing everything they're doing so that we can keep score. I pray we're not part of that crowd. I pray that we're part of the crowd that's not interested in building walls between them and God and them and us, but that we're part of the crowd interested in tearing down walls between hurting people and ourselves. And that we can be sensitive to what God's doing in their life and tell them with certainty hey you may have made a mistake you may have messed up you may have done it multiple times but God made you and he hasn't given up on you and he loves you and he cares about you and his mercy is forever and ever and he'll help you in the midst of your mess if you'll call upon him and trust Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight. More and more, we're sensitive to the fact that people around us are hurting. We see people who are friends and family hurting. We see people we meet on the street and the hurt is written all over their face. Their eyes have gone dark. Many, it seems, there is no hope. And God, we just pray that instead of trying to make ourselves judges, keeping count and keeping score of every mistake someone makes and why that they don't deserve any help from us, that God, we could be more like you. And that we, through our own resources and our own love,
could show them your unfailing chesed love. And pray for them and love them and see them come back to you and freed from the prison that's holding them captive. Lord, let us become prayer warriors, not just for our needs, but for the spiritual needs of everyone around us to the ends of the earth. Thank you for these that are here as we consider these things, Holy Spirit. Speak to us as to how your truth impacts us and our daily walk with you. Let us see you at work in the world and let us join you where you're at work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all God's